way. It's me. It's Renee. I thought you were going back to the hotel. Well, I realized as I was driving away that I had taken the bag with your shirts and you had the bag with my shoes. <laughs> Is something the matter, darling? You seemed in such a wonderful mood earlier. I was thinking about Bo. I apologize to you, Renee, for my son. I do not know what's gotten into him lately. It breaks my heart that you two aren't getting along. Maybe if you were gentler with him. You are a marvel, you know that? Bo makes it clear how he objects to my marrying you. And you treat him with nothing but kindness. Well, maybe that's because I know how he feels. I mean, after all, it's not unusual for a son to worry about his father. Well, he has no reason to worry. You were the finest woman I've ever met. I'm sorry about one thing, that we didn't get together years ago. Well, that's because you were off marrying all those pretty women you knew. And you were busy turning down all those men you knew. Maybe fate did play along. And now you're going to give your love and your trust. Hell, I am the luckiest man alive. Vicky? In the library, Bo. You know, I... I swear Asa has always been the most stubborn man that I've ever known. But he's always prided himself on his common sense and his ability to read people. Those things are both gone now. He's in his own little world, you know, just away from everybody. When I try to bring him to his senses, he flat refuses to listen to me. Oh. I just don't think he's gotten over Clint's death. No one in our family has. I know. I, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I mean, I know that I, for one, should pull myself together, but I seem to be totally unable to face reality. I admire you. I think your strength is remarkable. I really wish that Asa and I could adjust as well as you, but we can't. It's just not possible. I think, well, I'm going to ask you to be a little bit more patient with both of us. Well, we all have to find our way to, to deal with our grief in our own way. And I appreciate that, but Vicki, Asa is headed down a road right now for nothing but sorrow and pain that he's never even known. You are the only person that can help me save him. Well, if it ain't our old pal Clint, fancy meeting you here. Hold it, Clint! Seems like you ain't so smart after all. Smart enough to know two sidewinders when I see them. What have you done with Cody? <laughs> you really oughtn't to believe everything that you read. You know that note you got from the old timer? Wasn't from Cody. You said it. I sure did. And you went for it like a tenderfoot goes for fool's gold. You know, you had the whole town believing you were some kind of genius or something. Hell, you almost had me fooled. You don't know how much pleasure I get watching you fall for the oldest trick in the book. All right, hands up over your head. Real easy, like. carrying any surprises with him. He's on us now. All right. Now, get him ready. Ready for what? <laughs> All in good time. First little lesson in history. You know, before you came along, me and Laredo were Buck's top hands. He trusted us. Anything he wanted done, we did it. Then you started putting ideas in his head, like law and justice. Well, sooner or later, he was bound to figure out that a man's problems aren't all handled by gunplay. This is the West, mister. How here a man gets double-crossed, he don't expect no apologies. Because it's kind of hard for a dead man to say, I'm sorry. Uh, so you brought me out here to get a little revenge, is that it? <laughs> He's picking up on this real quick, ain't he, Laredo? Well, maybe he ain't such a fool after all. <laughs> I never double-crossed you, Deal. 
Now, Buck turned his back on us and run us out of town like a couple of dogs with their tails between their legs. I think it's all your fault. So that makes you number one on our list of people to get rid of. He ran you out of town because you tried to shoot me in the back like the coward you really are. <laughs> I was protecting my boss. That's all. And look what good it did me, huh? Well, you're gonna pay for it, cowboy. And the rest of your pals are next on the list. Right, Laredo? That's right. Mr. Cody Vasquez. But first, the almighty Buck Buchanan. Oh, what on earth are you talking about? Talking about his involvement with this, this woman that he's about to marry. Renee? They've always gotten along beautifully. I know that he genuinely cares about her, but as far as I'm concerned, this lady is moving way too fast. Oh, they've been seeing each other for months. I was over there at the mansion today. He's got everything, all our ledgers, all laid out there explaining Buchanan Enterprises to her. Now, she's just taking it all in, you know, just as fast as he can dish it out. Oh, Bo, I really don't see any harm in her showing an interest in his company. I know, but it's more than just that, Vicky. It's this hold that she has on him. Bo, your father loves her, and she loves him. You don't hide things from the person that you love. But Asa knows about her past. Not about her being married to a very rich man who was about twice her age and who died about a year after their wedding. Where on earth did you hear a rumor like that? It's not a rumor. I had John Russell uh, investigate her background. How could you do such a thing? Vicki, I'm not saying that I'm proud about what I did. I did it because I care about Asa. Now, you said yourself that he was hit real hard by Clint's death. And then all of a sudden, when this, this Renee starts hovering around like some buzzard... You... Now, I'm not, I'm not going to just sit by and, and watch her take advantage of his vulnerability. Does Asa know? Yeah, yeah, he knows about it. I explained what John had found about her past, and I tried to talk him into just, you know, slowing down on these marriage plans. He told me to mind my own business. Just quit interfering with him. But I, I, she's always been so good for him, I cannot imagine her deceiving him like that. Yeah, but the big problem here is that he has become so dependent on her, he's practically turned his whole life right over to her. Now, when you think about this woman's past, with a wealthy husband. Bo, look, now that he knows about it, I'm sure he'll handle it. Yeah, but what if he doesn't? What if he doesn't come out of his grief until one day when he realizes that all of a sudden she has a toehold on him that he just can't shake loose? Oh, I don't know. I don't have the answers to your questions. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't be dragging you into another crisis. No, look, I, I will support you in every way that I can. I guess today I just, I can't deal with it today. Sarah was showing me some pictures earlier of her trip to Greece, and there was some, some photos of Clint mixed in with them. Damn, Vicky. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. I... Oh, it's all right. I'll live. <sighs> Listen, uh, I'm supposed to meet someone, but if you need my company, I can always stay here with you. Oh. Oh, this is between Clint and me. You just, you take it easy, okay? Don't expect miracles. I know. Thank you. Okay. Well, fate hasn't always been on my side. I'm... Sorry to have kept this from you, Asa, but I think that you should know that I've been married before. I know. You know? Well, then you... You were just setting me up. I wanted you to tell me the truth, not to have it dragged out of you. How did you find out? It doesn't matter. What is important is this. You lied to me. I... I didn't lie to you. I just didn't mention it. Damn it, Renee. Don't make it worse by playing games. You're the one who's playing games here, mister. I don't care how you look at it. I deserve to be told the truth by you. Of course. And I ask you to believe me, Asa, that I didn't leave it out to hurt you in any way. I had my reasons. I would sure like to know them. Asa, please, you've got to trust me on this. Please, don't ask me to explain. I'm sorry, Renee. 
If I'd have known before, or if you had told me the truth, but when this you, all started. Now you do know. Can't we just leave it there and go on from here? No, we can't. I have to know why you lied to me. Asa, are you saying that our getting married is at stake here? Yes, it is. Asa. How could I marry you, Renee, knowing this relationship is not based on honesty and truth? as water. New clean and clear conditioner from Revlon. Clearly beautiful. Look, most conditioners appear greasy and heavy in water. Look again. What you can't see is what laboratory research proves. New oil-free clean and clear conditioner leaves less to weigh your hair down. Fabulous body. Incredible shine. New clean and clear conditioner and shampoo from Revlon. So beautiful. In response to our challenge, people attempted to stay new where data. All right, Asa, I'll tell you what you want to know, but first you have to promise me that you will listen to everything that I have to say before you pass judgment. You have my word. Well, starting back in Nevada, where I lived, I'm afraid that my vision of the world didn't mesh with the small western town that I lived in. I had my share of bows, but uh, their idea of a night on the town was a movie and a malted. Oh, nothing wrong with that. It's just that I had bigger dreams. And then I met Dexter Braddock. He owned a chain of hardware stores, and he gave me a job as a cashier. And, well, we started having lunch together, and I began to notice what a handsome man he was. He had silver-gray hair and steel blue eyes that sparkled with life. Gray hair. How old was the guy? In his 50s. But that didn't matter. I mean, he was unlike any other man that I have ever met. He was so... He was so kind and loving and gentle. And filled with adventure. Once when... Uh, he took me all the way to New York on his private plane, and he, he surprised me with a six-course meal. And then when we landed in New York, he took me to the Metropolitan Opera. They were performing Madame Butterfly. And I cried. Oh, I, I cried through the whole last act. Here was a woman was fated to die because she was afraid to spread her wings and break with tradition. And I said to myself, no matter what my life is like back in Nevada, I want it all. You sound like you were a gold digger. Looking back on it, maybe I was. Anyway, after Dexter proposed to me, I accepted, and his... His family accused me of marrying him for the money. They didn't realize that I cared about him and that I loved being with him. Fine, fine. But did you love him? No. No. But I did care a great deal for him. And later, when he became ill, I took care of him. He had an extremely debilitating disease. And I, I, I was a nursemaid to him. And after a year, when Dexter couldn't stand the pain anymore, when he could see that the illness was draining the life out of me as well, he took an overdose of medication. So he checked himself out? Yes. And the family accused me of killing him for the money. But the DA ruled that his death was an official suicide. But you had all his money. You, you could live wherever you wanted to, do whatever you chose to do. I gave it all away. Charities, children's hospitals. Whoever needed it got it. I didn't want it. 
I didn't deserve it. Not after marrying Dexter for all the wrong reasons. Why didn't you uh, tell me this before? I mean, what, what were you afraid of? I didn't want to risk losing you. I didn't want to risk that you wouldn't understand me. Asa, I love you. But I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to break off our engagement. Never happened. Never. So what does Vicky think about Renee taking Asa for a ride like this? Well, she really didn't have that much to say about it, Rafe. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. To tell you the truth, I got the feeling she was willing to give Renee the benefit of the doubt. Well, that's fair enough. From what you told me already, it's going to be tough to get Asa to listen to reason. Yeah, well, that's why I wanted you to meet me here today. I'd like to get a little bit more information on Renee's background. Now, I know you're busy right now, but I was hoping maybe you'd be able to help me out anyway. Oh, why not just go back to John Russell? He's already familiar with the case. I want to keep this in the family from now on, Ray. This thing could get pretty sticky. Okay, so you're worried that there's more to this than John's already uncovered. Not that I really suspect anything like a foul play in Renee's background. I'm just curious why she found it necessary to lie about this marriage. Now, I'd like for you to get a little more information on her husband's death. We know the man had a terminal illness, but how did he die? Was there any uh, anything suspicious, uh, you know, surrounding that death? Okay, I'll get on it right away. Thank you, Ray. You know, I'm surprised Asa didn't pick up on this himself. He's always had a sixth sense for people lying to him. I know. But since Clint's death, Ace is a changed man. You know, I, I hate like hell going behind someone's back and investigating their past. But damn it, I want to protect Ace. Well, don't worry about a thing, cuz. I'm with you 100%. If this Renee is trying to get her claws into Ace, his family's going to know about it. Make sure he's tied up nice and tight, huh? Wouldn't want no granny not spoiling our plan for us. No problem, deal. He ain't gonna get out of those. I sure am glad I held on to this handy souvenir. Oh, I've been wanting to use this again for a long time. You know the last time I used this? I killed an engine. <laughs> of course, had to kill another engine before that just to get a hold of it. <laughs> Figures. I always did have you pegged right from the beginning as being a fella that didn't have a whole lot of respect for human life. Ooh. If I'd known you was in a preaching mood, we'd have set you up on a soapbox before we tied you up. You're not going to get away with this. Blaze knows where I am. Yeah. And she thinks you came out here to meet Cody. <laughs> but by the time they figure it out, you ain't going to be in any condition to set the facts straight on it, huh? They'll think the Indians got a hold to you. Buck will never suspect that he's next on our list. Any last requests? Yeah. To see you rot in hell. You're making this a real pleasure for me. Say goodbye to the nice gentleman, Laredo. Adios, stranger. <laughs> next! <laughs> This Easter, lots of bunnies are trying to be the Cadbury bunny. Honey. Honey, stop. Did you get the note I left you this morning? Yes, I saw it on the kitchen table when I came down for breakfast. I wanted to talk to you, but some business came up and I had to leave. We don't see much of each other lately, do we? Huh? Well, uh, you're spending a lot of time trying to run a newspaper and a television station That's all right. at the same time. Time I'd rather be spending with my darling daughter at home. Well, how are things with you? Okay. That's it? Just okay? I'm doing fine, Dad. Sweetheart, I know we've had our differences lately, but I'm still your father, and I care very much about how you feel. <laughs> what do you want me to say? That I go singing through the day like nothing's wrong? Well, I don't. Wade and I are hardly speaking to each other now. Oh, really? I'm sorry to hear that. I really am. Well, is it any surprise that he's mad at me? He says that our not getting married, or at least not living together, is all my fault. Because I'm trying to please both you and Mom. 
Well, sweetheart, I don't think it's fair way to put that kind of pressure on you. Dad, he's absolutely right. I feel like I'm in the middle of a tug of war here, and no matter which direction I get pulled in, I wind up being the loser. Honey, I'm sorry you feel that way. Your mother and I asked you to, to put your wedding off for a while because we felt it was the best thing for you and for Wade. Fine. But don't expect me to be very happy about it. Darling, your happiness is the most important thing in the world to me. As long as it doesn't include Wade. I'm sorry. I don't want to fight with you, but it seems like every conversation we have is going to end up back at square one. Me and Wade. Right? Uh, oh, uh, perhaps, uh, <laughs> perhaps this will cheer you up. I'll tell you, Ginny, what you did for those little ones yesterday was oh. just downright special. I'll tell you, they haven't had such decent teaching in, well, since this side of never. <laughs> I must say, I found it positively exhilarating, mm. looking down into those mm. eager little faces, oh. answering their very many questions. Oh. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Blaze. Hi, oh, Petey. Uh, can we have a pot of tea and some cakes? Huh? Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, I have a half a dozen parents have stopped me on the street today just to tell me how excited the children were when they got home from school yesterday. Oh, we had a few hours together, Blaze. That was hardly school. But it could be. Jenny, I mean, think of it. Just helping all those youngsters enrich in their minds. Blaze, I know the joys of education. That's why I became a teacher in the first place. So why don't you just stay on and, and make a difference where it counts the most? I mean, I just can't imagine St. Louis needing you more than we need you here. Blaze, it's, it's just not that simple. I am bound by a contract that I must honor. And besides that, I need to live in a big city. I like the people and the excitement. And a chance to hide where you will not be found. Thank you. Now, I know that Buchanan City is not the most exciting place in this country. I mean, Lord knows this is the fanciest restaurant we have to offer, and it's not very likely that you'll be seeing a performance of the magic flute hereabouts, but... Oh, Jenny, we do have something here that St. Louis just hasn't got. What's that? That's Clint Buchanan. Now, around these parts, most women would consider him a real catch. But he is a married man. He has also been influenced by the frontier life. And lots of times, these wives, they just desert their husbands and head back east. And what if his wife decides to return to mm. him? No, I think Clint has resolved himself to the fact that that's not going to happen. You know, as infuriating as that man can be at times, there's an incredible underlying sadness there. It just breaks my heart. He's a good man, Jenny. I wish I knew more about him, Blaze. I wish I knew more about men, period. <laughs> oh, honey, what's there to know? They're rough and tough on the outside and deep down. Honey, they need to be loved and cared for, same as you and me. I don't know. I think maybe it is too late for me. Brandolph was such a long time ago. My, my life has taken a totally different turn since then. How can I possibly place all my my hopes and my dreams into the hands of a man who may never be free? Well, honey, I know this may just sound a little corny, but I think that you've just got to follow your heart and hope for the best. Oh, nice shot, Deal. <clears throat> little high, though. Yeah. Oh, guess I'm a little rustier than I thought. Well, you want to try again? Picture your big old bullseye right over his heart. Yeah, good idea. <sighs> no, can't do it. What, are you going loco on me? Well, look at it. <sighs> Suffering and pain and misery. <laughs> Why put him out of it? He never did nothing for us. I Let's like just let him die real slow-like. I like the way you think, Deal. Too bad we can't hang around and watch. Yeah. It'd be a real shame to ruin our plan by getting caught. Hey, let's get out of here. Hold on. What about the Dawson brothers? They're supposed to meet us here after they go to Eagle Pass. Uh, I'm way ahead of you. I already wrote them a note. Uh, tell them to take what they need here and meet us all out there. I think they'll find it right here. Plain as day. <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah, I just want to make sure our friend in there is 
stage foot. <laughs> Like Mandrells have been using White Rain shampoo and conditioner forever. The White Rain family of hair care. Coming. Can I come in? Donald, why are you here? We agreed you wouldn't pop in like this. I know. I broke the rules. I should have called first, but I, I need to see you. Well, you've seen me, so goodbye. Hey. Oh. You don't know what I'm going through. I've been out there pacing the hall, trying to come up with a reason or an excuse just to knock on the door. Well, I guess there is no excuse then, Donald. Look, I can't stop thinking about you. No matter what I'm doing or who I'm with, I focus on you all the time. It is driving me crazy. God, I knew this was a mistake. I knew I shouldn't have agreed to work this closely with you. That's no mistake, Lee. You know as well as I do, you took this job so that you could be close to me. No, that is not true. Donald, why can't you accept the fact that it is over between us? Because it's not true, Lee. That kiss confirmed it. The way that you look at me confirms it. Why don't you just admit it, Lee? You want this as much as I do. No, Donald. Just give in to it, Lee. Give in to it. Stop playing it so safe. It's just you and me. Well, honey, I have got just the thing to take your mind off mint for a while. I bought me a new necklace, and I'm just dying to show it off. Oh, I would dearly love to see that. Yes, I ordered it through this new company in Chicago, the R.W. Smith Watch Company. I have seen their catalogs. Yes. Well, I just think that someday we're going to be able to order whatever we want from a place like that. Oh. <laughs> yes, I do. Come on. I got it locked up in the safe over at the saloon. Oh, afternoon, May. Hello, oh, Blaze. Miss Jenny. Hello, May. I hope Buddy is recovering from his illness. Oh, his fever's gone down, but he was just sick about missing your classes yesterday. His little school friends came over last night, and they said you were wonderful. Said you made learning fun. Well, I am delighted that the children enjoyed themselves. Well, May, I was just taking Jenny over to the saloon to show her a new piece of jewelry that I bought. You care to join us? Oh, I'd love to, but... Well, I guess if I kept my eye on the time, Cody's going to be coming by to pick me up. We need to do a little shopping for some supplies before we go out to the Robinson's barn raisin. Barn raisin? Mm-hmm. Well, I thought he was over at the uh, Desperado Cafe in Lawless. Well, Blaze, why would you think he's there? Well, a while ago, an old-timer came in with a note for Clint. It was from Cody, asking Clint to meet him at the cafe. Oh, no, that just must be some kind of mix-up, because Cody's out at the Robinsons, and so are just about all the other men in town. In fact, Clint's going to come out there and meet us later on. But don't you find this a bit odd? Well, I don't think there's anything to fret about, Jenny. I think it's just a simple mix-up. Yeah. But didn't you say that an old-timer came here with a note? Well, yeah, he came in a while ago, and I mean... Oh, speaking of, there he is right now. I mean, you might ask him for yourself. I think I will. Would okay. you excuse me? Sure. Uh, I will see you. Excuse me, sir. I was uh, hoping perhaps that you could help me. Well, who are you? Oh, uh, my name is Virginia Fletcher. Please, Miss Fletcher, please. People call me Cat Pappy. Uh -huh. uh, now, tell me, what can I do for you? Uh, well, uh, I understand you, uh, you delivered a note here a while ago. Yeah, sure did. To a fellow named uh, Clint. Oh, a fine gentleman. Nice tipper, too. Gave me a whole silver dollars. Of course, of course that long lost. Uh, desert has a way of making a man uh, lose his parched throat. <laughs> uh, I see. Well, I'm, I'm afraid I cannot afford a silver dollar, but perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps this would suffice? Yeah, that should suffice just fine. <laughs> uh, well, uh, would you be able to tell me, please, uh, who gave you the note? Was it a very handsome young man with black hair and a mustache? Yeah, he was a mean, tall hombre. Did he give you his name? Name is Deal. <gasps> Hold on, Miss Fletcher. I mean, I don't, don't they're taking the notion to try to help Clint. Don't do it. Oh, but he's falling right into a trap. I must go and save him before it's too late.
Clint. Is that you? Yes, Vicky, it's me. Oh, my God. You died weeks ago. I know that's what you believe. And I can sense the pain you're feeling. And I'm sorry about that. I'm very sorry. Oh, it doesn't matter, darling. You've come back to me, to me, and to the children. I can't stay, Vicky. I just had to see you one more time to say goodbye. No, don't leave. The choice is not mine, and it's not yours. Vicky, you've always been my courage and my strength. I need that from you now, as well as your love. No, darling, please don't do this to me. My life is nothing without you. I cannot bear the emptiness. I'm not strong or brave. I'm frightened and I'm lonely. Don't be frightened. Don't be frightened. Just hang on to our love. It will be forever. Please don't go. I have so many things to say to you. All I need to know is that you love me and that you'll always love me. Of course I do. You know that. You know that I'll always love you, but I need you so. Kiss the kids for me. Give them my love. And help them understand. Please don't leave me. I love you, Vicki. I love you. Wonderful news, I... Vicky? I sneeze so much, I think my nose is broke. I have the worst cold I ever had a, in my whole life. My cold makes me feel like I'm underwater with my fish. For all these colds, there's Pediacare. Sarah, when did you come in? Just a minute ago. Are you all right? Did you see him? Who? He was standing right there. I didn't see anybody. You are standing right there and I talked to him. I saw him. Vicki, who are we talking about? Clint! Clint was standing right there. I was talking to him. When I reached out to touch him, he disappeared. Vicki, Clint's dead. No! No, he's not, Sarah. He said that's what we believe. But we found his body in the desert weeks ago. How do we know that that was really him? Vicki, when I came in here, your eyes were closed. I, I think you were dreaming. No. No, Sarah, don't tell me it was a dream, because I know what I saw. He's alive. I feel it. Somewhere, somehow, he's alive, but he's in trouble. He needs my help. I have to find him. I have to save him, and I will not let him down this time. Vicki, you have got to stop torturing yourself. Don't you see what you're doing? You're blaming yourself for Clint's death. I should have been there. I could have stopped him. Oh, come on. You can't think like that. Clint was determined to prove something by going off on that ride. He would have done it even if you had been there. And besides, you can't go back to the past and change something that's already happened. Sarah, it wasn't a dream. It was... It was like a, a cry for help. Vicki, I know that, that you have had a tremendous struggle with this thing, but somehow you have to try to let go of all your pain and your suffering, and you have to live your life. There's so many people that depend on you, the children and, and Asa and Cord. They all look to you for strength and for courage. I know they do. And maybe you're right, maybe it was a dream, but I have to know for sure. W will you promise me something, please? Of course. Please don't mention this to anyone. Okay. Thank you. I have to make a phone call. Vicki, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Look, I'm going to be upstairs if you need me. Thanks. Dad, it's beautiful. As soon as I saw it, I thought it would make a nice engagement ring for Lee. I'm going to ask her to marry you? Any objection? What, are you kidding? Dad, this is wonderful. When, when are you going to pop the question? Tonight, when she uh, gets home. Mm -hmm. That is, if I don't get cold feet. No, no, you can't. 
You won't. This is too perfect. This is what I have dreamed about ever since Mom moved to Nevi Carriage. Well, now, hold on, sweetheart. Not so fast. You know, she might turn me down. No, no, she won't. It's Kismet. Kismet. It's a 50-50 chance she'll say no. Dad, where is your sense of romance? When two people love each other, there's a certain power that draws them together. Like me and Wade. Oh, yeah. Can I give you a bit of advice? Sure, sure. Don't bring carnations this time. Oh, where did you hear about that? Well, Mom told me all about your proposing to her. She said that you were allergic to carnations and that you sneezed your way through the entire will you marry me. <laughs> true. Absolutely true. And your mother was a trooper. I think that was when I realized she was the only woman in the world for me. That's right. I haven't met anyone since that I felt quite the same way about. She is a special lady. Yeah. Do you think she'll say yes? I don't see why not. She said yes once before. Yeah, sure. And then we both messed it up, didn't we? Dad, that's past. Forgiven and forgotten, okay? Do you mind if I tell Wade? No, that's okay. Tell him. Okay. I love you, Dad. I love you, sweetheart. And remember, remember, stay calm, stay positive, okay? Bye. Please, Donald, just let go of me. I know what it used to be like, Lee. Remember spending the night in each other's arms? Remember how that was? We were in a world all our own. Look, what are you trying to do to me? I really hate you for coming in here and trying to manipulate me, trying to play around with my emotions. Fine. You can hate me. You can love me. Just don't pretend that I don't exist. Donald, I don't. But you are being obsessive. Why? Because I show you what I feel. Because I'm willing to admit that I still love you. Well, you throw that word around to me like it's supposed to mean something. It doesn't. Because when I needed you, you didn't love me. Where was your love when you found out I worked for Renee? I made a big mistake. Yeah. No. No, I made the mistake forever believing that you loved me in the first place. Look, I am not that starry-eyed young girl. I have grown up. I am a lot wiser. And you are dead wrong if you think I'm going to ruin everything I've worked for so you can satisfy some sort of macho attempt at, 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 at winning me over. I have my daughter now. And I don't want to lose the chance to be a good mother to her. Lee, the price you're going to pay for that dream is way too high. Would you stop bringing Tom into this? You don't love Tom. There's no way that you can feel for Tom what you feel for me. You tell me, Donald, what I do feel. How do you know? That was the whole problem to begin with. You didn't care how I felt. Everything was you. Well, I'm sorry. You can't have your own way. Grow up and get out of my life. Not until you look me right in the eye and you tell me that there is still nothing between us. Shut up, would you stop this? Stop this. What are you afraid of, Lee? You afraid of letting go? You afraid of what you're feeling? Or maybe you're just afraid of something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, you tell me that this is what you feel with Tom. Oh, God, no. No, no, I can't. I can't. I won't. Please. Glad to see you. I'm glad to see you too. Uh, there was something I wanted to discuss discuss with you tonight, but uh, I suppose now is as good a time as any. Well, what? Uh, what is something wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. It's it's something I've been thinking about for quite a while. Well, well, well what is it? Yeah, uh, it's this. Is this what I think it is? Yeah, I. Uh, well. Will you, will you marry me? Yes. Did I see a ghost? Or is it possible that he's still alive someplace? I mean, why was Clint talking to me about his coming death? Did I imagine all this? Well, from what you've told me, 
Let me assure you that many people have had a similar experience. Then it was not my imagination. Not at all. You see, when someone dies, they move on to another plane. That's what Clear Eyes told me. Clear Eyes? Clear Eyes is the chief of an Indian tribe in Arizona, a member of his tribe. He took me to see him when we were still searching for Clint. But he told me that Clint had crossed the border to another time and another place. Mm. Some people refer to it as limbo. In any case, it's a sort of spiritual plane of consciousness. From there, the soul seeks its final resting place. So you're saying that Clint has not yet found true peace? His appearance would seem to reinforce the theory. Probably, he's being kept in limbo by someone who is reaching out to him. And that person is me? Perhaps. Would you like to try to contact him? Oh, what would I say to him? I mean, what does he need from me? He needs to know what's in your heart. Whether he stays or leaves is entirely up to you. Yes, all right. Now, concentrate on Clint's face. Try to see him and feel him within your heart. Do you see him? No. But I know what he needs from me. Move on, my darling. Find the peace that you so desperately want. Goodbye, my love. Well, I suppose May was right. There must have been a misunderstanding. But the old man said... Ah, the old man wanted money for whiskey. This place is closed. It's boarded up, in fact. Here I am fussing about Clint, and he's probably with the rest of the townspeople raising a barn at the Robinson homestead. When will you ever learn, Virginia? Worrying about another woman's man is nothing short of foolishness. Vicky, is that you? Vicky, help me. Vicky. Artificial lemon grow? Do they grow in lemon factories? Are they born in lemon factories? Oh, where do artificial lemons grow? <laughs> Some other dishwashing liquids have artificial lemon, but Sunlight has real lemon juice. And now Sunlight has even more real lemon juice, so it cleans real fast. Oh, where do artificial lemons grow? Not here. Sunlight has real lemon juice to clean real fast. <laughs> Regina proudly announces the discovery of something obvious. If you take the best part of this vacuum cleaner yeah, and stick it onto this one, you get something much better. Introducing the Regina Housekeeper. Housekeeper! It cleans floors and switches instantly to clean here and here and everywhere. Accessories cost extra, but you'll never touch a vacuum again once you get a housekeeper. Velveeta versus butter. Watch. Which melts better? Velveeta. Dad, Dad, oh, hi. Hi, what are you doing? Checking up on your daddy? No, no, but as long as I'm here, you didn't lose the ring, did you? Ring? Mom's engagement ring. Oh, no. Dad. Oh, wait a minute. I know what I did with it. What? I gave it to your mother. You proposed? Yeah. And she accepted? Oh. oh, God, I knew it would work out. I just knew it. Well, we definitely have to go celebrate, okay? You choose the restaurant. We will have champagne, the work. Sounds wonderful, Donna. I look for you. We have a major problem with tonight's newscast. Excuse me, sweetheart. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Wait, wait, hi. I have terrific news. Dad proposed to Mom, and she accepted. 
big deal. Well, it is a big deal. I thought you'd be happy for them. Why should I? They ruined all my chances of being happy. Hello, Tina. Hmm. Hello. Hey, how are yourself? What's going on? Where's the troops? I don't know. I just got back. Sarah, is there something wrong? Oh, you know, it is one thing to help people deal with their blindness, but all these problems in terms of setting up the school, not to mention the government red tape... Well, 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 what does the government have to do with this? It's all privately funded. I know, but in order for someone to receive city or state aid to attend the school, they've got to go through all these formalities and guidelines. Oh. I've been thinking it might be better just to give Vicky back the endowment and let her make a contribution to her favorite charity or something. Sarah, you can't. Hey, you've got to open up that school in Clint's memory. Tina, look, just forget the government. You don't need them. You got me. Virginia Fletcher, get yourself back to town. There is nothing wrong here. This is all your imagination. Hello. Oh. Uh. Uh. Time for that, Jenny. I'm bleeding like a stuck pig. Yes, you're quite right. I, I must, I must get you into the buggy and take you into town myself. No, there's no time for that. I can't hold on that much longer. No, you must hold on. You must hold on. Take. You cannot give up hope. Take please. out the arrow now. I, I, you want me to do that? Yes. I, I cannot do that. I have no expertise. I have no, I have no experience. No, you can't do that. Take it out or I'll do it. All right, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, dear God, this place is so filthy. I have no bandages. I have no disinfectant. Whiskey. What? Whiskey. Whiskey, yes, yes, yes. This is whiskey. I do hope it's not watered down by a second. Sometimes the bar keeps do that. Um... Would you like a few sips? Uh, uh, not, not too much. Good, I have no bandages. I'll show you how that it goes with bandage. Oh. I shall soak the bandages in the whiskey. Good. How do I get the arrow out? Break off the point and pull it out. Break it off. Yes, I will. I will. This is going to hurt you. I'm going 
want. Clean this. You must... You must bite down on this. You must bite down on this now. Once you start, don't stop. Okay. Forgive me for the pain that I'm about to cause you. didn't ruin our plans. I did. But everything's worked out now. Everything is okay. And uh, Mom and Dad are going to get married, and I won't have to worry about them. Marilyn, you're going to worry about them for the rest of your life, and you're going to do anything necessary to make them happy. And to hell with everyone else, including me. No, that is not true. I've done everything I can for them now, and the rest is up to them. Wade, I love you. I want a life with you. And now we can have it. That is, unless you haven't changed your mind about me. No. You know how I feel about you. I just don't want to be second anymore. I never thought of you as second. Yeah, but I am. No, you're not. And I'll prove that to you when we find an apartment, we move in, we put up our poster of Paris, and we take a trip around the world. Do your parents know about this plan of yours for us to just pick up where we left off? Well, I told Dad, now that things are settled between him and Mom, that you and I have a few things to settle for ourselves, like our happiness. And he did not Marilyn, me about just it. because your father is engaged to your mother does not mean he's going to change his mind about us. Neither is your mom. They're not going to stop and they... And no, I won't let that happen. Wade, mom and dad will be happy together and you and I will be happy together. And I promise that's the way it's going to be from now on. Ricky and the boys are just having a terrible time getting over Clint's death. I mean, this whole thing has been a nightmare to them. And it would really help them, you know, for you to open up that school and, and dedicate it to Clint's memory. I know that I'm a qualified therapist, but that's all I know how to do. So you'll learn along the way. Why are you being so negative about this? Okay, look. I was there this morning. I dealt with the difficulties. And now I'm just facing the reality of the situation. I mean, one of the things I pride myself on is I know when to back off. I mean, I know when it's a losing battle. Oh, look, if I thought that way about my baby, I never would have found him, and he'd never be out in the backyard right now playing with Kim and Jessica. This is hardly the same thing, Tina. It's completely different. Yeah, in comparison to finding our baby, it's a piece of cake. Look, I will make a list of everything that I think can help with the organization and all that government stuff. All right, and then you just tell them what you want to do, and they'll do it. Tina, the endowment, it's very generous, but there's not enough money there to hire an expensive staff. Well, I'm sure a lot of people will just donate their time, and if you find you need more money, well... Then talk to me. I'm usually good at finding that. Well, uh, you seem to have an answer for everything. Sir, this is just as important to me as it is to you because it concerns my family. Look, when you really want something, you have to go after it. If you want a dream, you have to do whatever is possible to make that come true. And besides, you have my help, but... I mean, if you want it. Oh, sir, please, don't let Vicky and the kids down. I need to have my head examined, but, um... All right. All right, I'll give it a try. Oh, good. Okay, well, we could start on it right away. I'm going to find my phone. Oh, uh, well, wait a minute. Before we go soliciting funds or drawing up blueprints here, maybe uh, Tina and I ought to have a private talk here. Why? Sarah's in charge, so she can hear whatever she wants. Uh, this is kind of personal. Uh, Sarah, if you'll excuse us for no a second. No problem. I'm going to start making some calls. Look, Court, if you don't think that you can be supportive of this whole thing, why don't you just stay out of it? I'm sure it's going to be the best thing for Vicky and for Sarah. Oh, yeah? And, and what about the best thing for you? I mean, what's in it for you to pull all these strings? Strings that I didn't know you were capable of pulling. Now, Tina, what is going on here? What kind of scheme are you working on now? about me. Listen, Tina, I know you are directly responsible for Sarah taking that job in Greece before she knew about Clint's will, all right? And I also know that as soon as she got back here, as soon as she set foot in the house, your first priority was to get her out of here. Now, you tried, but it didn't work. So now I'm starting to think, all right, maybe you want to help out with this school for the blind thing so you can sabotage the whole operation before it ever gets off the ground. I can't believe this. You know, I think that is the worst thing you've ever accused me of. Now, wait a minute, girl. Don't go copping that attitude with me because I'm not going to let you go until I find out the truth. All right. All right, I called Mr. Donakos in Greece, and I asked him to bring his daughter back from Greece to convince Sarah to go there. All right, it was a terrible mistake. 
mistake, okay? And I'm sorry, and I'm trying to make up for it. Mm-hmm. And all this is for Vicky and the kids, right? Well, yeah. I mean, Vicky's been trying to be real brave about this whole thing, but sometimes I walk by her room and I hear her in there crying, or, or I catch her and she's just, just holding on to Clint's belongings. And it breaks my heart because I can't do anything about it. And, and I really think that this, this school would, you know, lighten things up a little for her, don't you? Yes, I think you're probably right about that. Okay. Well, don't forget the fact that I came in here and talked Sarah into, in, into g giving her some more hope about opening the school. Now, if I wanted her to go to Greece, that'd be pretty oh. stupid, wouldn't it? I mean, that would mean I just blew the whole thing. Damn. Tina, you, you know, you pulled the scam after scam on everybody involved. So when you do do something out of the goodness of your heart, you wonder why everybody doesn't believe you. Look, I said I made a mistake, and I said I'm sorry. All right? Now, I'm trying to make up for it. Fine. If you can't find it in your heart to believe me, then fine. Don't believe me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just wait a second here, Tina, all right? All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I, I apologize. I'm sorry I jumped on your throat like that, all right? No, that's all right. I understand. But I am giving up any scheming at all. Whoa, wait a minute. Don't go off the deep end here. Don't make promises that you have no intention to keep, okay? No, that is one that I intend to keep. And I'm going to do everything I can to make this school a success. Mm. All right, well, if, if that's the case, then, hey, whatever you need, you just let me know, all right? Thanks. I'm going to go talk to Sarah and tell her my ideas. Okay. Hey. Oh, would you look who's <laughs> here? Hi, honey. Did you have a good time playing with him and Jessica? I'm afraid not. He's not feeling too well, Tina. Whoa, what's the matter? Well, he had a cough, but I didn't think it was serious. He's gotten much worse. Oh, no. Here, why don't you come to Daddy? Yeah. I think he's getting the croup. Croup? Oh, no. no. Well, I'll go and get humidifier started. It always seems to help Kevin and Joey. Oh, good idea. Thank you, Kim. Do you do, right? No. no. For the first time in my life, I finally found the happiness I've always dreamed of, and now this. <laughs> Lord knows I've made mistakes, but I've... I've paid for them. Why do I have to keep on paying and paying and... Pay yeah, Renee, stop ranting and tell me what happened. I came this close to losing Asa this afternoon. How? Oh. Asa almost told me to get out of his life because of his son. I hired a private investigator to dig up things out of my past that I thought I had buried years ago. Oh. I should have learned from your example. Oh, the past always comes back to haunt you. I had to tell Asa everything. I could have died right then and there. Okay, get a little look, look. Why don't you sit down, right? Relax, take a deep breath. And would you mind telling me what Bo dug up on you? I know your past. It's nothing that terrible. It's something I never even told you. It was such a dreadful, painful time in my life. I just wanted to put it out of my mind, forget it. And I'd almost succeeded until Bo started his crusade to get me out of Asa's life. Well, can you tell me now? I was married once before. Married? Yes. It was about, it was about 20 years ago. I was young. I was lost. I didn't love him. I thought he'd give me some sense of security. It was the worst mistake I ever made. You got out of this marriage, right? In a manner of speaking, honey. He was terminally ill when I married him, and I didn't even know it. He was much older than I was, and I really became more of a nursemaid than a wife. But I stayed with him right to the end. And he died? Oh, Renee, I'm sorry. Why didn't you tell me this before? I wanted to forget about it, pretend that it never happened. Oh, God, if you could have seen the look on Ace's face when I told him my secret. I've never been so embarrassed, so humiliated. Never, never in no, my no, no, entire no, no. life. Now, wait, what did he end up doing? Miraculously, he insisted we set a date for the wedding. Renee. That is wonderful. What is your problem? Look, that proves he loves you. Would you just relax and rejoice in your good fortune? Relax? How can I relax when Bo is hovering over us like a vulture trying to break us up? Now, now, come on, look. If Asu didn't leave you this afternoon, he is not going to leave you. So just relax. You know what I suggest you do? I suggest you forget about Bo. And you concentrate on making Asa happy, all right? 
Okay, now, listen, can I get you a drink? Oh, no, I don't think so. Oh, thank you, darling. Oh. Hey, is this a new ring? Um, yeah. If I didn't know better, I'd say that was an engagement ring. Well, it is. Don't tell me that Donald Lamar has finally convinced you to marry him. No, no. Uh, I'm engaged to Tom. Tom? Yeah. Oh, Lordy, I don't know which is worse. Come on, Renee, please. You are my best friend. I